Hello and welcome to Lynchburg Live. I'm your host, Linda Smith. We've heard so much lately in the news about the bed bug crisis in the United States. In fact, one gloom and doom uh, report that I read said, if you don't have them, you're more than likely going to get them. Uh, and before I accepted that as gospel, I decided to contact Orkin to find out what the real info is about the bed bug crisis. My guest tonight is Chuck Schaefer, Orkin's Roanoke Commercial Account Manager, who's going to be telling us just how serious this bed bug problem is. Chuck, welcome to Lynchburg Live. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You know, as we get started, can you just tell us a little bit about your job, what you do as account manager? Um, I work primarily with uh, businesses. Um, I work with them to develop customized pest control programs. Okay. And what areas of Virginia do you service? I cover um, a large part of central Virginia from Farmville to about Dublin. Oh, that's quite a job. It is. <laughs> All right. We've heard so much recently about bed bugs. Would you please tell our audience what a bed bug is? Um, a bed bug is a very small insect. Um, they uh, are primarily nocturnal and um, they feed primarily on human blood. Is, is there more than one kind of bed bug or is it or just one variety? Um, it's pretty much one variety. There are other um, very, very similar uh, bugs. There would be uh, bat bugs, um, barn swallow bugs. Um, play side by side. They're very difficult to tell the difference. You really need a microscope to tell, but the common household bed bug is really what we see most. Okay. I, now can you see them with the, the naked eye? Absolutely. Uh, the adults you can. Uh, as the, the younger are very difficult to see and, uh, and then the eggs are, are very hard to see. How, about how big are they? they? An adult is about the size of an apple seed. Oh. They look pretty much like one also. So you really can see mm -hmm. them. Yes. All right. I, what kind of bites can you expect from a bed bug? Um, the kind of bites, I think what you can expect that is if you have bed bugs, you are going to be bitten. I okay. mean, you can really expect that. Um, as far as the kind of bites, yeah, that really varies on, you know, some people actually have a reaction to them, others don't. Um, I, I happen to uh, have no reaction to a bed bite whatsoever. That's so I would never know. So it's sort of like poison ivy. Some people mm -hmm. react violently to it and yes. some people don't react at all. That's correct. That's, that's interesting. All right, uh, they're parasites, you said. Mm -hmm. And, and they feed on mammals. Correct. Is it just people or do they go after other kinds of mammals as well? They primarily, it really is mammals. They, it's primarily human. Um, they will feed on other mammals uh, if the opportunity would present itself. Uh, one of the primary reasons that they feed on us is the lack of hair. Oh. and um, the ease of actually just getting directly to our skin. So body temperature doesn't really have anything to do with body it? Body temperature has more to do with um, them actually living on us. It's one of the primary reasons they don't live on us. Our, our bodies are a little bit too warm for them. So uh, that's why our homes are actually the perfect location for them because uh, they'll have a food source and um, they can actually feed and then go to a cooler area on the mattress or, or somewhere near the... They have the nice area. accommodations they and nice do. bed. Yes, they do. <laughs> All right, so they're really kind of vampire insects. Uh, yes, I guess you could say that. <laughs> How rapidly do they multiply? Uh, they do multiply fairly rapid, um, not as rapid as some other household pests, but, um, um, you know, over the course of several months, you can have uh, hundreds, if not thousands, of bed bugs, depending on the you know the the start of the infestation. That's terrible. Mm -hmm. I, are they rapidly multiplying insects? Um, Apparently, they are. Or they are. They? they are. But uh, there, like I said, there are other household pests that would multiply a lot faster. But uh, but they that is fairly quickly. I mean, you definitely uh, untreated, you would have a very large infestation very quickly. So their lifespan is longer than the average insect maybe or well a um, an adult um, that uh, has fed um, can live without a, a, another feeding for up to a year oh, uh, that's goodness. probably the high end it's the extreme but uh, they actually could that's pretty incredible mm -hmm, it is I do we know if they carry any diseases um, 
They're believed to carry um, certain pathogens, but uh, everything that I've read so far uh, says that there's no documented case of a of an actual transmission of a disease to a human. That's good. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, yeah. there's been talk about mosquitoes mm -hmm. transferring yes. diseases from human to human, but it's good to know at least that they don't. Um, all right, I've heard them called hitchhikers. And how do we get them? Uh, just that way. Uh, you can get them any number of ways uh, by, by going into an infested uh, area, uh, someone's home, uh, hotel room, any area that uh, has an infestation. And um, you know, it could be just chance. You set your purse down uh, and uh, one crawls in. You know, it, there are any number of ways. They will uh, crawl into suitcases and you then bring it home and, and that's the beginning right there. You know, somebody told me uh, that international flights, that you can get them sitting by, beside somebody, they'll just go from that person to you. <coughs> well, Is that true? Um, I can't say that it wouldn't happen. Um, some things that I've read stated that other, in other countries, um, they don't really look at it as uh, an issue like we do. Right. Uh, there are some countries where uh, they see a bed bug the way we see a mosquito. Okay. And um, it really is just a pest and they deal with it in different ways and, and um, you know, so. You know, after I did research for this program, mm -hmm. my husband and I went to a movie and the movie was really crowded. And I was trying to focus on the movie, but I kept looking at the man next to me and yes. wondering if anything was jumping off of him onto me. So this research for this affected me. <laughs> I know how you feel. All right, are bed bugs a large problem or a growing problem in the state of Virginia? Um, you know, I certainly can only really speak to this, you know, to the, the area that I work in. Um, I know that in this area, they are a, a fairly large problem and um, I would say that it is growing. It is definitely a growing problem. That's sort of scary, really. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, you guys sent me some pictures. Yes. And Phil, if you'll put the pictures up on the screen, I will get Chuck to tell us what they are. That is a bed bug. That's an adult bed bug. And um, you, you know, that's really what you're looking for when you're looking for an adult bed bug. That's the same and there's uh, an actual full grown adult and one that's probably in about its third instar. Now is uh, this on a mattress? That is actually on the edge of a mattress, yes. And it is one of the primary areas that you would find bed bugs. Hmm. More bed bugs? More uh, mattress? They, yeah, more mattress. They, they are actually very quick and when you, uh, if you were to ever see a video, if you, um, go to our website, uh, orkin.com, and, and click bed bugs, you'll actually uh, have an opportunity to see them, and uh, there are videos, and you can see that they actually move quite quickly. That is actually a uh, thermal system, and it's used for a thermal treatment of, um, of uh, an infestation where we actually will raise the temperature of a particular area, home, room, to uh, a certain temperature and it will, it can actually, it will kill the, um, the adults, uh, eggs and, and the babies. That is a technician actually taking a uh, thermal reading for that type of a treatment. You know, it's good to know that there is a treatment for this mm -hmm. that's effective and I'm gonna ask you about that in a minute but I wanted to get a few more of these questions asked. Um, statement I said at the beginning of the show that it's somebody said it's not a question of if you're going to get them but a question of when you're going to get them how I mean that's such a gloomy it prospect really but how how likely is that um, you know I think if you take basic steps and you're you become um, you know informed about the problem that the problem exists and um, you know what to look for um, I think your chances are really reduced you know, I, I deal with them all the time, and um, you know, knock on wood. You know, I take, I try to take the same steps, and they're, they're all of the same steps that we recommend. Right. Um, and um, so far, I haven't had the problem, but um, you know, I think just being aware and being informed that it is not uh, a bedtime story. You know, <laughs> it's not the bedtime story. Uh, they really do exist, and uh, and they are on the rise. Right. Um. You know, when I was growing up. If anybody had bed bugs, there were people who 
had really terrible hygiene, but it's mm -hmm. not like that anymore, is it? You know, I don't, obviously I can't speak from, from then, but um, I don't know uh, that even then that would have been the case. Uh, it actually has nothing to do with um, sanitary conditions. Uh, now I will say that um, those type of conditions will actually present problems during the treatment. They can actually make right. a treatment more difficult because um, those conditions can provide more harborage points for bed bugs and um, make it more difficult for the treatments to actually take. You know, uh, something I heard in the news a month or so ago about New York City and how a building in Wall St on Wall Street was totally infested and they had to treat the building and get everybody out of there and that's happened several times or it's been reported several times from New York City. Um, wh where do you find the largest infestation? <coughs> I mean is it larger cities or does it, or they, do they discriminate at all? Well uh, I mean it, they can be anywhere, anywhere humans are, anywhere right. we, we live uh, they can be. Um, you're finding in a lot of the major cities it's the population density that uh, really is the problem and um, they can travel so quickly and um, you know here I think that uh, from my experience it appears to me that um, while we we do deal with it in commercial I believe it's the residential side that is actually on the increase. Oh is it really? I, I you know from just from what I'm seeing. So do you see them in hospitals and dorms as well as hotels and motels? I think we hear more about hotels and motels mm -hmm. simply because people are traveling and... Yes, but all of the above. I, they, they really can be anywhere. Uh, when you deal with ho hospitals, uh, I will say that um, hospitals tend to have um, a lot higher uh, cleaning standards. So it's a lot more difficult, especially with the equipment, the beds, the types of beds. Right. A lot of times it's a little more difficult for them to take but it's certainly possible. Why are they so hard to kill and, uh, and to get rid of? Yeah, they're, they're very resistant. Um, they, they adapt to the uh, different products that, that uh, pest control companies use. Um, they hide very well. And um, they, if you don't get them all, I mean, the possibility exists that, that you're gonna, you'll, you'll start the whole process of another <laughs> infestation again. You know, in doing research for this, I read that they will hide under wallpaper if, if there's a little flap of wallpaper loose or they'll hire, hide in your switch plates, mm -hmm. light switch plates. They will hide anywhere that is near what you would, we, you would be the food source. They would hide anywhere near you. So um, that would include anywhere on the bed, nightstands, baseboard, carpet, pictures on the walls. Oh, geez. Um, <laughs> you will find them anywhere. That's interesting information mm -hmm. but you know now I feel like when I go to a motel I'm yes. gonna have to look a whole lot mm -hmm. of other places all right uh, when you go on a vacation and you check into the hotel what's the first thing you should do to make sure you're not walking into a situation well it it really is the same uh, same advice that I would give someone at home um, inspection it really is uh, inspection um, on our website there are details there um, to show you exactly what you're looking for. Um, the way I explain it most of, t most of the time is if you picture uh, taking a felt tip marker and kind of just touching the mattress, um, that is, and how the ink would diffuse on the material, um, that's really what you're looking for. A lot of those spots and what we would call staining. And um, those are definite indicators uh, of a, of a bed, bed bug infestation. Um, and, um, you know, to be honest, I, I would probably do a little bit of research prior to going to, you know, whatever location you're going to go to. Right. Now, we're, we're obviously at the end, coming up on the end of vacation season, so I'm assuming that some of us have brought <coughs> some of these things home with us. Uh, with the exception of the bites, mm -hmm. I, how would you know that you've brought something like that home with you? Um, again, it would be really inspection. Uh, it's very, very difficult to know if you've if you've brought even one home. Uh, so what you what you need to be aware of is make it a part of when you're changing the sheets on your bed to look for the signs, uh, the staining, uh, actual bed bugs, and um, being able to identify the problem early uh, will certainly help in the treatment. It would it will make the uh, treatment a lot easier. 
How effective are putting our pillows in, in plastic or zipper cases and put, putting the mattresses in those same cases? Um, I would recommend it. Uh, I would certainly recommend it if you are someone who uh, invested hundreds or thousands of dollars in a mattress. Um, what it really does is uh, it protects the mattress and the box spring uh, from allowing the bed bugs. If you you know look at the underside of your um, your box spring, they actually can get up inside there, oh, and um, you know once they're up inside the uh, the material, it's it's very very difficult to treat in there. You know, just talking about it, I'm starting yes. to itch a little. <laughs> Anyway, uh, one of the rumors that I heard recently is that if you buy underwear, socks, that sort of thing from that are manufactured in a foreign country, that you should come home and immediately wash them in very hot water and dry them for 20 minutes in a hot dryer. Is, is that true? Well, I can't see where it would hurt. Okay. Um, I mean, you know, and I, I certainly couldn't speak to just coming from, you know, another country. but. Um, I do know that if you were to take clothing and you put it in a dryer for approximately 20 minutes on high, that it would kill um, adults, eggs, or, or the young. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. I, my husband just ordered a shirt and I made him, <laughs> made him fling it into the dryer for a little while after he got it. Um, I also heard, and you know, this is a scary, scary thing for people, that it's possible to transmit those things from person to person when you're in a department store trying on clothes. <coughs> I, I would believe it could. I mean, if you're someone, uh, if you're someone who um, actually has them on you, and um, you, you know, had a fair number, I, I would imagine that you could uh, drop one while you're there, or one would crawl off while you're in there. Uh, but you know, I don't know that it's actually you know a transference directly to those clothes. I mean, but I would imagine that it could happen any number of ways. Right. It could happen, but it's not the most likely thing. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't see that as the and most likely way. Not, not something that you should stop going mm, shopping. Not at all, not at for. all. All right, now here's the question everybody wants to know the answer to. How do you get rid of these things? You get rid of them by first identifying that you have the problem and correctly identifying that you have the problem. Um, you, once you identify the problem, you really need to have a professional take care of it. Okay. You, um, you, wanna, you can contact us, you can contact Orkin. Um, but the primary uh, solution is you really need to bring a, bring a professional in uh, that knows how to deal with the problem. So people who are going out who have the problem and think they're going to solve it by buying bug sprays and commercial things just in the grocery store, that's not likely to take care of the problem. Or it may, but not I effectively. Haven't, I haven't used them myself, obviously, so I can't directly speak to them. But what I can say is this some of the worst problems, the worst infestations that I've ever had to work with were a result of someone trying to deal with the problem themselves and did it uh, thinking that they had solved the problem and it actually exploded. Oh. So the oh. problem exploded. That's pretty terrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what's involved with the treatment? if if you know you've got a problem and you call Orkin or any other commercial com company and ask them to come and take care of these problems. What's involved with the treatment? Well, the very first thing that's going to happen is uh, an inspector will come out and confirm that it is bed bugs that you have. Um, and then they will develop a program uh, that's specific to your home. Uh, your home's different from everyone else's. Right. You, you know, your belongings are different to how you live, it's different. And um, so it really does need to be a customized program developed for you. And, um, and once those recommendations are laid out, then we, we start to take the, the uh, steps uh, to move forward for treatment. Is it costly? I mean, it can be. It can be costly. Uh, um, but I will tell you that uh, it, it's more costly when you wait. It, it really is. And um, solving the problem early um, is is really the way to bring a tr the cost of a treatment down as low right. as you can. Uh, major infestations uh, are very difficult to deal with and um, treatments already require multiple visits. You, you typically aren't going to get rid of it on the first treatment so we happen to uh, go in at least twice. So um, it's really something you need to deal with early. What's involved with the treatment? 
Um, well, it depends on the treatment. There, there are um, several different types of treatment, but uh, thermal, for example. Um, is that what the machine that's was what the that machine we saw? was that we looked at uh, what we do there is we actually there there's a, a formula that's used that calculates the uh, cubic feet of of your ha your home and um, and then how long we actually have to run the equipment to bring the temperature throughout your home to whatever the determined temperature is and um, for a certain period of time so um, that's a that's a pretty in-depth treatment is, is this something, I, I assume it's something that you would have to leave your home? For that you would, yeah, yes. And, and take yeah. your for, pets. And for the majority of the treatments, you, you do have to be out of your home while the treatment is, is uh, being conducted. And you said it's a two day or, or several days? Out of your that, home? Uh, that, or that you would have to, to do the treatment, it takes more than one day? Multiple visits. Okay. Uh, we, we happen to, the way we do it, we do a primary treatment and, uh, and then we will return and um, do another inspection and treat as needed, you know, to make sure that the uh, problem is gone. Is the treatment toxic? Toxic. Um, I mean, is, are there chemicals involved, or is it there, heat? Just there, heat. No, there can be. There are different products that we would use, um, and uh, it, it probably is the primary reason that w when you're dealing with the treatment that you really want it to be done by a uh, a licensed technician, yeah. and. Um, that is probably the the um, main way you're going to know that it's being done as safely as possible. I, well, I, I can't imagine trying to take care of something like that mm -hmm. myself. I, yes. I can't imagine because I'm not much into bugs anyway. But to me, if you're going to get it done, you need to get it done professionally. And you, you really know, do. And all right. Now I read somewhere that after you have treatment, that you should wash all of your bed linens in hot hot water and dry them in heat but somewhere I also read that you can put them in the freezer um, you know it's uh, <laughs> it's funny that uh, you know I have read that I've read um, that uh, because they happen to like a, a moderate temperature I think it's about between about 60 to 70 degrees um, they find that the cold the extreme cold works as well as uh, as the heat does. So uh, yeah, I would imagine if you're using, um, you know, if you're doing it with small things like clothing, right. that that could work. You could do that. Mm -hmm. So it's not like the science fiction books where someone's frozen and then when they thaw out, they're active again. Freezing actually no, does kill them. I don't think so. Okay. But I will tell you that uh, bed bugs, uh, you know, the cold down to I believe it's about 45 degrees, they still can be fully active. My so. Goodness. All right, you, you come home from a vacation, and what do you do about your clothing and your suitcase? Should you do anything or take any precautions? Uh, I would recommend that your clothing would go directly to the washing machine and, uh, and uh, be cleaned. That uh, your suitcase, if you can, uh, if you have a garage or you have a, a shed, place it out there for you know, a period of time or just store it there. Uh, the worst thing you can actually do is take your suitcase directly to your bedroom and lay it on your bed and start working with your, you know, your clothing there. That's the worst thing you can do. You know, I think if, if, if we're going to take this seriously, we have to be informed mm -hmm. ab about the best way to handle or, or preventive, take preventive measures too, just especially if you do any kind of traveling. Um, how do you know that you've actually gotten rid of them I, after you know after you all come? Mm -hmm. It's it's really continual inspection. It really is. It's uh, um, being aware that the problem had existed, and um, knowing that the possibility were to exist, you know, exist that uh, it, it could reoccur, and continuing to look for the signs and just making it a a normal practice when you're uh, actually changing sheets and, and uh, comforters and bedding. Now I'm going to ask you a really silly question. <laughs> I read somewhere that bed bugs smell like raspberries. Um, when you, uh, as the population grows, they actually take on a sweet smell. They really do. So I don't know if it would be raspberries. Maybe <laughs> to you it would be raspberries. But uh, they do as the population increases, that, uh, that sweet smell does increase. That's, uh, I thought that was a joke. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, if you could tell 
this audience one thing or, or several things about bed bugs, what to do about them. What would you tell someone who's just asking you a question about it? Um, I would say that it is a very serious problem and um, Orkin provides numerous resources and more information for you that uh, you could ever want and by going to our website at www.orkin.com and clicking the bed bug tab you can find all of the information you could ever want but it is just something to take very seriously and um, just by being a little bit proactive you can really reduce the uh, possibility of getting bed bugs. Chuck I thank you so much uh, for coming and being on the show and giving us information that I think is very important for the public to know. And I also thank Orkin. I've enjoyed working with you all. You've been very helpful and, and I do appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed tonight's show and that it's answered some of the questions or concerns that you may have about bed bugs since we've heard so much about it in the news lately. Um, my next show will feature Dr. Andrews who will be doing a follow up on his kids first pediatric surgical mission in Mexico. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful evening. Good night.